Okay, I'm going to be um, presenting the uh, preliminary results of our recent work at Ayla substation, which was carried out between um, April and June this year. The um, substation development was being carried out by uh, BAM Nuttall Limited on behalf of SSE and was located between Ayleth and Beagle on ground to the northwest of Hochend Farm. It uh, lay to the north of, of the River Isla where it runs through the uh, fertile agricultural lands of Strathmore. And as the Hoch part of the name suggests, it was situated on the uh, low lying alluvial former floodplain. Its uh, proximity to the River Isla meant that there was a plentiful supply of fresh water and it was located in an area of very free draining uh, sands and gravels. Both of these factors make it an attractive area for settlement and occupation. There's quite a bit of known archaeology within the immediate area, notably from the uh, Roman period. Following the line of the River Isla on the opposite side from the substation development is the um, Camelon to um, Cargill Roman Road. Uh, this part of the road leads to the uh, Cardine Roman Fort, which sits almost directly opposite the substation site on the uh, southern side of the river. The fort itself covers an area of uh, 3.7 um, hectares internally, making it one of the largest Roman forts in Britain. And finds from the fort indicate a single uh, Flavial, Flavian occupation, which is thought to have ended with its abandonment in 86 AD. To the east of the fort, again opposite the substation, is um, Cardine Temporary Roman Camp. It's a large camp enclosing around uh, 54 hectares and is likely to relate to the construction of the fort. Much closer to the substation site is um, Hoch End Enclosure Schedule Monument, and that's the uh, red shaded area towards the bottom um, left corner of the slide. This is a rectilinear enclosure which is sub subdivided into uh, two compartments and measures around 110 by uh, 56 metres. It was identified from aerial photographs and has never been excavated but um, it's thought to be prehistoric in date. The um, substation site itself is recorded as being the location of um, Hoch End um, Unenclosed Settlement. Uh, this potential settlement uh, was identified from um, aerial photographs which um, showed a series of large um, circular crop marks. These uh, crop marks were investigated by CFA back in um, 2011 when a trial trench ex uh, evaluation was undertaken. And it was found that these were actually natural hollows filled with dark, silty soil deposits. The um, trial trenching did, however, lead to a number of pits and uh, linear features being identified, with a shard of pottery suggesting a prehistoric date. Further archaeological interventions by Guard in uh, 2014 and um, 2020 identified similar features, confirming the um, archaeological potential of this area. This meant that uh, when the substation development went ahead, an archaeological condition um, consisting of a monitored top saw strip was um, required by Perth and, Ro and Kinross Heritage Trust as part of the planning consent. Uh, this led to the identification of archaeological features consisting of, and that's a post-built rectilinear structure which is considered most likely to date to the Neolithic period, which is the um, bottom left um, inset box. A later prehistoric roundhouse, which is the um, top uh, right inset box. A group of five pits, including the one from uh, which the prehistoric pottery was recovered um, during the 2011 evaluation phase of works. And that's uh, located diagonally left uh, from the roundhouse below left. A further 10 scattered pits of potential prehistoric date, uh, mainly across the central area where the green lines are. Um, up to 19 keyhole or uh, figure of eight shaped uh, Roman oven pits. And that's uh, one group in the top left box uh, and another in the inset box diagonally down from the roundhouse and the pit group. And then scattered ones around the uh, periphery of this plan. And 
also a linear ditch with a curving uh, 90 de degree end and that's running diagonally upwards from left to right and then diagonally downwards left to right. These features were predominantly located on the raised gravel deposits and only very occasional on the lower li lying sandy deposits. Much of the area is also covered by cultivation furrows which are re represented by the green lines on this slide. In uh, contrast to the early archaeology, the um, cultivation furrows were visible in the low-lying sandy natural deposits, but uh, were not present on the raised gravel ridges. This is what we've interpreted as a Neolithic structure. It's an interpretation based entirely on morphology, as there were no finds recovered um, during the excavation. There was uh, also a notable uh, lack of charcoal, so it's unlikely that there will be any materials suitable for radiocarbon dating. So I think our best hope for uh, absolute dating is that something will be recovered when the um, soil samples are processed. The um, structure was located immediately to the northwest of the uh, Hawk End um, Enclosure Shedlin Monument with um, an overall length of around 50 metres being exposed. Excavation had to cease at the edge of the buffer zone around the Schedule Monument, so um, it's possible that it may have continued further to the southeast. It was defined by uh, broadly parallel lines of post hole set um, six or seven metres apart, which gave it a, length, uh, a width to um, length ratio around eight to one. The uh, post holes themselves varied massively in size, ranging from less than 20 centimetres in diameter up to over one metre in length. We're unsure if there's any kind of relationship between the post built structure and hawk end enclosure. Uh, with the latter being scheduled, we obviously weren't able to go beyond the edge of the um, 10 metres buffer zone. But um, it may be a note that the Neolithic structure is on the same alignment and a projected continuation would mean that it would conjoin um, Hawk End enclosure to uh, close to the centre of its northwestern end. However, it may be that this is simply the most lat natural line to follow based on topography and the outlook of the site. Morphologically, the uh, plan of the Neolithic structure appears most like the um, LBK longhouses of um, Central Europe. This slide uh, shows it on the same scale as one of the um, LBK longhouses from um, Ozanica um, near Krakow in Poland. However, even the longer th longest of these was only in the region of um, 45 metres. So if it were a long house, this would make the uh, A-list substation structure the largest in Europe. At um, six to seven metres wide, it's around the um, same width as the LBK long houses, which were um, typically between five and a half to um, seven metres. So we can't rule out the possibility that this could have been a roof structure. In Comparison with the known Scottish Neolithic timber halls such as um, Balbride and Carathus, the Aylis substation structure is over twice the length, but not more, much more than half the width. Even the uh, relatively long and narrow timber hall at Lockerbie is only um, 27 metres in length and slightly wider at 8 metres. The um, comparatively rich uh, material culture from the known timber halls is also at odds with the dearth of finds from the um, Aylis um, substation. So um, consequently, it's considered that a domestic function is unlikely. The uh, nearest post-built parallel which we could identify was the um, enclosure, enclosure at um, Douglas Muir Angus, which is uh, depicted on this slide at the same scale. Interpreted as a subdivided uh, mortuary enclosure, this structure was uh, rather larger at 65 metres by 20 metres, 
and was defined by much more closely spaced and uh, regular post holes. The uh, size would almost certainly preclude this from being a roof structure. Other than being uh, post-built, the main similarity between Douglas Muir and Ayla substation was the uh, lack of fines, suggesting a non-domestic function for both. Uh, radio carbon dates from Douglas Muir confirmed a radio carbon date of around 4,000 to 3,500 BC. A number of post-built cursed monuments have also been identified in Scotland, but um, all of these uh, look uh, looked at were on a massive scale and uh, far larger even than the Douglas Muir enclosure. However, it could possibly be speculated that the Ailis substation structure might have been a mini cursus providing an approach to a larger um, monument, uh, mortuary or um, ceremonial structure represented by the um, Hawk End enclosure scheduled monument. The uh, nearest parallel to the Ailis substation structure in terms of size which you could identify was the um, Institutal um, Long Mortuary Enclosure. Exact size comparisons are difficult due to not knowing the uh, full length of the Ailis substation enclosure. But um, at 50 inches long, the um, Institutal Enclosure was the same length as what was exposed at Ailis and um, only slightly wider at just under eight and a half to uh, just over 10 metres. It differed from the Ailis substation structure in that it consisted of a continuous palisade ditch with um, timber uprights, which the um, excavator described as a fence. However, it is similarly lacking fines, possibly indicating the same non-domestic function as the Ailis substation. A radiocarbon data around um, 3100 BC was obtained from Inchtuthal. Another uh, mortuary structure is Another mortuary structure of a similar side was identified at um, Killam in Yorkshire, which was also defined by a palisade ditch. The um, Killam mortuary structure was later to develop into a long barrow, but there was uh, no clear evidence of this um, either at Inchtuthal or at um, Ailis substation. So um, having established that the Ailis substation closure was, has some of the characteristics of um, other structures and identified as mortuary enclosures, this is our preferred inter interpretation at the moment. This is the um, later prehistoric roundhouse. Um, it was located on a slightly raised gravel uh, knoll towards the um, centre where the ground would have been at its most free draining. The um, post ring had a diameter of um, six, uh, 9 metres 70 and um, consists of 10 post holes with um, two inter internal post holes which probably represent roof supports. The um, two features depicted in pink represent um, a possible entrance structure, which were identified during the um, 2011 evaluation phase of works, but had been removed by a combination of um, ploughed truncation and the uh, recent topsoil strip when the um, roundhouse was recorded in, in 2021. So I think this is an indication of how vulnerable these sites have become after they've been uncovered once and then covered over again. And a pit with a large flat stone on the surface of the upper fill was identified on the uh, western edge of the roundhouse. It was partially overlain by very consolidated redeposit natural, so it may potentially have been an earlier feature. This was a group of five prehistoric pitch w pits which were um, located between the roundhouse and the easterly most group of Roman field ovens. They uh, range in size from around um, 50 centimetres diameter by um, 35 centimetres deep up to um, nearly two metres long by um, 75 centimetres deep. The um, largest pit was partially excavated during the uh, 2011 e evaluation 
and a shred of prehistoric pottery was recovered. So this in itself was reasonably significant given that there were no finds recovered during the excavation. The um, pit was in tentatively interpreted as a burial pit following um, the evaluation phase of works. We didn't get anything to confirm this one way or another, but it was found to contain uh, flat angular stones towards the base with uh, layers of burnt sand and, ch and charcoal identified above. So hopefully Postec should be able to throw some light on what this means. The other pit shown contained um, a quantity of bone scattered throughout the upper fill and um, two end set stones on the base. The uh, Roman field ovens were identified as um, keyhole or um, figure of eight plan features with um, black charcoal rich fills. They had a fairly random distribution with um, small groupings and a number of individual pits identified. This uh, random distribution is shown on this uh, illustration of the uh, westerly grouping located to the northwest of the Neolithic structure. Both groupings were on the higher gravel knolls with only a few isolated oven pits on the uh, lower lying sandy natural. They tended to range in size from around one and a half to three metres long by one to one and a half metres wide, but were typically around one and a half by one, sorry, by, they're around um, two and a half by one and a half metres. Similar features have been identified in other parts of Scotland, including um, Kintore, Mill Timber, and at the site of Air Academy. This um, bottom illustration um, shows the um, easternmost group of oven pits located to the um, southwest of the roundhouse while the uh, photograph depicts the um, two oven pitch which were um, almost end-to-end uh, -to, -end to each other. Again, this illustration seems to indicate a rather random layout with a pattern perhaps being um, dictated by topography and the suitability of the area for carrying out the task in hand rather than a pre-planned layout of the type often associated with the Roman military. Other sites do seem to show greater evidence of a more organised layout, with, for example, the um, ovens at Air Academy being laid out in two parallel rows, located 30 metres apart, while many of those at Mill Timber were set out in a line with one end cut into an existing natural bank. Around 180 similar ovens were identified at Kintour, which, uh, where it suggested that the ovens represented the uh, locations of the tents of individual um, co uh, contubernia, which consisted of groups of eight men. This interpretation would make sense in relation to Aylis substation, as the um, high ground where the ovens were located is likely to have been drier than the lower lying areas, and consequently more suitable for pitching a tent. This slide shows examples of the um, figure of eight or um, dumbbell, shape, dumbbell shaped pits. They consist of two fairly distinctly separate pits conjoined by a narrow channel. One of these pits was for the uh, fire pit where the oven itself would have been located and the other would have acted as a receptacle for um, breaking the hot embers into. These figure of eight pits tended to be shallower than the keyhole shaped pits with um, evidence of scorched ground at the fire pit end. This was situated at the um, broader end for all the figure of eight ovens excavated. And they tend to be located with areas sandy, natural in the keyhole uh, pits. Um, hence the um, shallow nature of these features may have been a result of um, survival rather than how they were constructed. Uh, these are examples of the um, keyhole-shaped pits. 
I think they would have um, functioned in exactly the same way as the figure eight pits. But um, they are notably, notably different in that there was much less distinction between the um, fire pit and um, ember pit parts of the oven. In each case, one end was wider than the other and one end was deeper, but there was uh, no clear pattern whether it was the wide end or the narrow end, which was the deepest, with it um, varying between individual pits. There was also no clear indication as to which end was uh, for the oven and which was for the embers, with, um, charred, uh, with, with, with charcoal spread throughout the length of the pits and um, no evidence of um, scorched earth at either end. Consequently, it's presumed that the um, deeper end would have been intended for the embers, as it would have been easier to rake the um, hot mater material out of it uh, if it was being pulled downhill. Uh, none of these pits had any kind of stone lining or surfacing at the base, as has been identified in a few of the examples from um, Mill Timber and um, Air Academy. I've included um, this slide to give you an idea of um, what these ovens might have looked like and um, how they worked. Ovens of this type uh, were often constructed on clay and um, clay fragments were recovered from um, similar ovens at Air Academy. However, um, no such remains were identified at um, Ailis substation. So um, consequently, it's considered that um, turf possibly support on branches, was probably the most likely construction material. This would have been um, formed into a hollow dome shape within the fire pit, with an opening facing towards the raking pit, and um, possibly a hole in the roof to create the required draw. The um, illustration depicted is a reconstruction of an Anglo-Saxon oven, but um, there's no reason to suspect that it differed markedly from a Roman one. The um, series of drawings is also based on an Anglo-Saxon oven, but shows the um, same process as the Romans would have followed. The um, first one shows the uh, lit fire, which would have brought the oven up to the correct temperature. The embers that were then raked out to prevent them um, from burning the bread, and the bread dough would have been placed in the oven and the entrance sealed while it was left to cook. The um, type of bread baked is uncertain, but the um, illustration depicts experimental loaves based on the famous um, Panis uh, Quadratus found carbonized at um, Herculaneum. So finally, does the presence of these ovens indicate the um, presence of a uh, temporary Roman camp? Some of you may have noticed the um, playing card corner on the uh, linear feature depicted on the first two slides. This uh, linear feature also had the V profile um, often associated with Roman ditches. However, there are a number of um, factors which suggest that this isn't a Roman camp ditch. Firstly, the um, cartographic evidence would suggest that this was a continuation of a 19th century field boundary which is um, shown on this illustration of the um, 1959 OS map with the um, ditch in green and the field boundary in black extending as far as the River Isla. This would also be a very, very small measuring less than uh, one metre wide by um, six, 60 centimetres deep throughout and um, in places less than half a metre wide and um, 20 centimetres deep. This compares with a 3 metre 60 wide by um, 1 metre 75 deep ditch recorded for the nearby um, Cardeen temporary camp. And um, finally, the ditch would rule a straight, indicating that it's most likely to have been dug with a V shaped um, ditching plough. And the fill was fairly loose with one of the excavator slots containing this decayed straw. The um, lack of of a temporary camp ditch is certainly not unique in relation to the discovery of Roman period ovens. 26 similar ovens were identified at the site of Air Academy, 
while 90 were discovered at um, Bill Timber during works for the Aberdeen Bypass. And in both cases, there was no evidence of a surrounding ditch. Consequently, it is possible that the camp was defended by some other method, such as the um, tribuli method of lashing sharpened stakes together, which is um, shown on the um, top right illustration. So um, just to conclude, I think that uh, Roman ovens identified in fairly close proximity to one of the largest Roman forts in Britain further highlights the um, likely strategic significance of this location. This strategic importance possibly reflects the continued suitability for this area for human settlement, which is demonstrated by what may be an important ritual site for the earliest farming commuti communities and um, a settlement site during the later prehistoric period. Thank you. <laughs>